Welcome everyone to this service design workshop. Uh, we're going to start with a small presentation about uh, service design as a, as a whole, as a design practice. Uh, and we're going to bring an example to explain how a, a user journey map works and also how a blueprint, service blueprint works. Um, but uh, okay, so let's start with a um, bland definition of service design. If you Google for service design now, you will find um, a whole bunch of definitions um, because we acknowledge the fact that service design really uh, lies at the intersection of various um, design skills or design activities. For example, user experience or user interface and consumer experience design, but also digital transformation, especially for instance, if you are an agency or a business that wants to move from the offline world into the online world. How do you do that? How, do, how does that change the services that you provide? Uh, that leads me to, for instance, system and strategy design. So once you figure out what these new systems that you want to have in place, how are you going to implement them? What are the tactics that you're going to use to bring these services to the market or to make your consumer or user aware of them? Once you do that, um, obviously uh, it will impact your current business model and you might need to go through a redesign of your current business model and that and service design has a lot to do with that as well especially because it goes to uh, look into how the organization behind the service works and what kind of new or different capabilities need to be built in order to deliver services so in summary, I think service design is just a big um, crossroad of different uh, practices. And the unique thing is that it delivers value to multiple stakeholders and multiple users at the same time. Okay, moving on to the next slide. As you can imagine, um, service design is layered. It has uh, visible part of a, a part that the user and the consumer is exposed to and there's a more invisible part which is behind in the background inside the company or organization that delivers that service and to make that a little bit clearer we're going to go through an example that i mentioned in my last workshop which is this iot um, service so let's pick an example of a insurance policy uh, insurance company that um, decided to look at new ways to be closer to their consumer and and really try to delight them by removing all the bureaucracy and annoyance of going through you know filing a complaint when something goes wrong with you, for instance your house insurance or your car insurance and things like that and they decided to do that by looking at Internet of Things, for instance. Um, why could we use some data that we can gather from our house devices in order to really understand what our consumer wants and needs in order to tailor insurance policies that are really specific to their needs, perhaps save, even saving them some money uh, as well as time. So obviously there are two sides, there's the consumer side and the company side. But uh, say we wanted to develop this service based on IoT devices placed around the house. How would that work? So moving on to the next slide. Here I uh, represented it in few simple steps. So uh, uh, the, at the top you can see subscription plus setting. For instance, if you were to subscribe to this um, new insurance policy service, you would subscribe and create an account and you will have to decide um, what kind of devices in your house um, are being connected to this service and what kind of data are being taken from them so everything is in your control and in your uh, you're aware of everything that is going on in the in the in the system and then um, you know you receive regular checkups you receive uh, advice from your app your your service on for instance uh small things that you could prevent yourself within in the house for instance say you have a, a house insurance 
to prevent bigger damages, for instance, like a leak, uh, because your um, um, Google thermometer detects humidity and it can tell you, hey, there is a, we perceive an increased uh, uh, increase in humidity in this part of the house. Uh, maybe you could try and go and fix it before we run out in bigger, in bigger problems. And this could be part of the service that the user is exposed to. And then time goes by and then unfortunately at some point there is a bigger damage. Say, I don't know, the whole kitchen gets flooded with water because the leakage got so big. Well, at that point the user still interacts with this interface and files a complaint to claim some damages from their insurance comp company by using a chatbot. So very quickly, very smoothly, uh, without too much time delays, they just can open the chat, ask for, um, use their insurance and have it sorted out really quickly, really painlessly. So these, all the things that I just talked about are user actions and touch points. So the touch points are all the elements on the interface and um, um, interactions that the users are asked to act upon, uh, which are put in place. And the user actions, it's self-explanatory, is what the users do or can do with those. So this is the more visible part of a user journey and a service blueprint. As you can see here, we have also an emotion. Um, emotion analysis of all the steps. So that's also an interesting thing that you can do in service design. You can really ask yourself and write user stories, which you can see uh, on the slide, it's a short text with description of how the user feels at different stages. And so you can have these emotion graphs to really understand the highs and the lows of their emotional journeys as they go through this uh, service experience. So all these things are the visible thing, the things that we can experience in the physical world, although it's digital. But what happens underneath? So moving to the next slide. We call it line of interaction. So whatever has happened that we can see and experience and it's really targeted to the user is, is on the top. While what happens underneath becomes a gradually more invisible and in the background, but it's still crucial to deliver this service and delightful experience, for instance. So in the stage, in the line between, in the, in the space between line of interaction and line of visibility, say you were to develop, um, uh, in, in this case, for instance, there is uh, nothing going on in between the, to these two stages because everything is handled in a, in a digital way. There is no human interaction between, um, between the user and someone that works for this organization, for instance, or for this insurance company. But say you were to uh, have part of your service to have a phone call with someone, you would place it there. You would, you would say in the, 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 front, the front stage of the service, although happening in the background, is that there is someone available for, in, a, in a call center, for instance, available to answer questions. And then we go even deeper. So in, in the line of visibility. And you go and understand how the systems behind uh, this beautiful interaction, this delightful interaction work and what kind of steps need to be put in place to make it work. So for instance, there is a steps, there's a whole line of steps about the IoT system. So what kind of data are being collected at what point, what kind of feedback loops are in place to have reliable risk assessments to be de delivered to the users. And also what kind of uh, auto-filling claim and preventative alert systems you need to have in place that keep feeding into um, our uh, computing power, basically, and that makes sure that the, the service doesn't have any gaps, that is um, um, completely, uh, completely streamlined. So all these things, uh, as you can see, are, are, are set up step by step and they are connected to each other. Um, but what becomes really, in so this is the line of visibility. What, this is what's happening in the background of the service, the, the, the digital infrastructure behind it. And then we go even deeper. So below the line of internal interaction, we go and look what is happening inside a company to make this service happen. So for instance, just to give an example, 
um, maybe insurance businesses are mainly uh, run by people who have experience but with law or policy making and they can really understand these nuances but with this new service they will need a data scientist that can give insights in terms of um, what how risks are prevented or managed so that is required as a capability that needs to be required and be, needs to be put in place for instance this data scientist might need to manually check the reports or assess if everything works fine or 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 code uh, say yes there's another programmer need, need to code and create and maintain this service alive uh, in different steps of in, in the different steps of the service so these are all questions that you ask yourself okay at this deeper level what kind of enablers are there inside the company or business that delivers this service to um, you know have a uh, to, to deliver uh, such a such a such a nice service to their consumer for instance I hope this uh, um, uh, this example clarified a little bit how a user journey and a service blueprint can come together by looking at these different lines uh, from the line of interaction all the way to the line of internal interactions moving on um, Yes, yeah, so at this, at this stage, I think it's interesting to reflect even when you design products, for instance, products really, say, for instance, Internet of Things products, um, in today's society, it's almost inevitable to run into some layers of service design, especially when we're in the realm of technology and, and, and digital services, because, um, yeah, well, it's something that we interface on a regular basis and it has and it has room for improvement um, all the time, basically. So how could this be meaningful to you for your project? Well, there are very few steps that you could start taking into account if you want to engage in a service design um, exploration. One, the first one is the mindset. So I think what is interesting about service design is it really requires a certain um, mindset that uh, yeah forces you to think in processes and in experiences that have a beginning and an end and once the beginning and ends are very clear it becomes really easy to see the steps even if these processes are loops it's it's pretty handy to have that mindset that everything can be plotted or or mapped into an experience in a, in a timeline basically after that you can follow design thinking approach by using empathy as a step you can go and identify for instance the, the 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 emotional journey that your user or consumer goes through and map it out against this map this this map of steps and uh, and really understand what are the pain points and what are the highlights of this experience and once that is visualized and and it gives you insight on what is actually needed this brings me to my third step uh, third point which is that I think what is interesting about service design is that it forces you to really simplify um, and understand the problem in such in such depths that it becomes easier um, to come up with solutions that actually mitigate and prevent user pains rather than creating a new thing that we assume will make it better. So in a sense, it just makes everything simpler, and it really shows that easy small tweaks along the, the user journey can really have a big impact in mitigating and preventing pains. And last and not, but not least, of course, once that more like higher level is very clear and it's the more, the more I would say the most creative part of the service blueprint, then it becomes really interesting to look into the deeper inner layers and deeper levels of how it works at a technic from a technical standpoint, from the infrastructure standpoint, but also what does that mean for the company, startup, organization that delivers that service? How does that shape or reshape their business model?